Uh, in order for the orchestration to work, we need the Met server in the system. So uh, to save time, I have already pre-installed the Met server. But uh, before that, I'll just preview how we install the Met server in the system. So what we do is we just navigate to Met server. Okay, in this application, Met server application. Windows or Linux system, or 32 bit or 64 bit, we need the download uh, down, uh, file for this MIT server. So I've already downloaded that and installed that in my system to save the time as it's a big file. So once I extracted that zip file, so there is one folder which I got through that zip file agent with the name of agent. So I just saved it. So in this first step, which we have to do is to install the mid server is go to this config file. I'm opening it with WordPad because I need to edit it as per my instance and mid server details. OK, so this is an XML file basically. So um, after downloading the mid server package, the first uh, step of installation is this file config file so we need to edit that so our first uh, name which we have to edit in config file is this parameter uh, name url so basically we will give the instance url name uh, to this parameter that is my personal instance url dev35948 dot service now hyphen dot com okay next parameter which we need to pass is is our mid server username so I've created one user in the system in service now with mid server role with the name as this dot mid dot server. So I have given that parameter name here and the second uh, parameter along with mid server name is password. OK, so I have already submitted the password and it was secured password. So it got encrypted in the value. So it's not showing up. What is the password for this user? OK, so if you don't want to encrypt it, you just keep this secure as a false. So won't be encrypted. Okay, the next uh, parameter which we need to uh, pass is our mid server name. What name uh, the mid server uh, in service now? So we, uh, we just give that name test demo. I have given the test demo. So there are other parameters, optional parameters as well, which we can uh, modify according to our need. For example, threads, RAM, memory. So that that can also uh, that other parameters are also there which can be edited according to your need but i didn't need that so i just uh, updated these four basic parameter which needs to be updated in order to configure a mid server in service now okay so the once i edited this file config file okay i just go to this batch file start okay so what we need to do is after um, the config file is set with the name, password, and uh, the parameters which are required. We just click on this uh, batch file, which is start. OK, so this will start our mid server. So mine was all, all already st uh, started. So it is first stopping it, and then it, it, then it again restarted. So uh, at the first time, you will not get this, because at the first time, you are starting the server for the very first time. So I'm getting this uh, uh, first stopping it, then uh, restarting it because it was already started on my server. So this, with this step, my laptop, my machine has become a mid server. Okay. So after that, I'll go into the mid server modules of service now. It's this servers module under mid server application. So you can see the yeah you can see the name which I have given to the mid server. There is an entry in the server's um, list that is mid server list with the name as test demo which I have given. Okay, so the status is up because we have restarted it. So the first time when you do that, the validated status will be no. So as I have already installed that, so it's a second time for me. 
so the it uh, the met server is already validated but otherwise uh, when you are doing it for the first time the validated uh, the met server needs to be validated so there is a ui action uh, under here related link so you just click on that validate link and the met server will be validated okay so in this uh, um, record our name of the met server status up or down so if i'll stop the mid server the status will be down validated yes the version is the service now version last refresh started stopped logged in user is the same user which i have given in the config file and the host name is the ip address of my system or it can be the name as well but generally it's ip address um, so if it is not defined the host name and the router network all those details have been listed here Okay, so this is the basic mid server record which got registered in our service now uh, system okay so apart from that uh, there are other uh, related list which uh, is being used with the mid server that is ip ranges capabilities and clusters or and threads is also used so like in large organization we have multiple mid servers right so uh, and we need to have a load balancer as well so in that case what we do is we just create one cluster okay for example i just go into the cluster mid server and the clusters module so i go into the clusters so i'll just give one name to it and the type is load balance So that there is no uh, the load is not only on one mid server. So in that case, what we do is we create two mid server and we include both mid server here. Include mid server. So right now only one mid server is there. So uh, uh, it won't show the second one. So for the load balancing or the clustering thing, we need one more mid server. So we just uh, uh, so yeah, the capabilities needs to be assigned. That's you the capabilities what it's talking about so we just go to the servers open our record of mid server so in capabilities we go and we edit capabilities so capabilities are basically the mid server what mid server can perform for example i require powershell as of now i don't require vmware ssh or so press so i just add the powershell to it so these are the all available capabilities according to your need for particular mid server you can add it so i just required the powershell so i added powershell only so this is the um, cluster thing i've already explained so in this um, there are two type of cluster one is load balance and another is failover so in load balance so as the name suggests so if there will be two mid server then the load will be managed across two mid servers and if the type is failover then when once primary mid server fails then it will go to the secondary mid server so the cluster is used for that purpose and an important part and the ip range are ranges are so whenever uh, the network is very complex and uh, there are many mid servers or servers in the system so we use ip ranges so we just give the ip range to a system uh, um, here of the uh, ip range of the network so in those that ip range only the mid server will work so it will again use in large organization where the network is very large and the mid servers are uh, there are many mid servers so right now it's just a simple demo and uh, I just made only one machine, my laptop as a mid server. So IP ranges is not needed as of now. So this is all about thread. So let me now just go to the orchestration workflow. So okay, so this is my um, orchestration workflow, which I've just created as a test workflow only. Okay. So uh, first activity is begin and end. It comes with every new workflow. When second is uh, activity is run script. So I have used it uh, to store a um, mid server host name in the scratchpad variable so that it can be used in next activity. So the purpose of scratchpad variable in service now is once you get a value, 
and you store it into the scratch pad it can be used in any activity across the workflow so uh, thus uh, it it doesn't need uh, um, value to be fetched again and again in all activities so it is um, something for, for which the scratch board is used for so i have uh, uh, created one property system property in the system because service now doesn't recommend hard coding value so what i've done is i have created one system property in the system the name is mid server host name so this is a property i have created and i have given my ip address in the value okay so you i'll show you how it will be used later on in the run powershell activity so it just extracted the ip address from this property and stored it in this scratchpad variable okay which i'll be using in the next activity so this is my uh, run powershell activity okay so um So get services of computer. So through this PowerShell activity, what I'm doing is I am fetching the services which are there in the system in this computer. The host name value is being passed here. So the in the first activity, I have uh, fetched the value from system property, the IP address of the machine. So the host name should uh, have should be populated in order to um, have this workflow run. Otherwise, it won't be populated because that is the only way where we are uh, calling our mid server. OK, so here the mid server name is not being passed here. The host name of the mid server will be passed or the IP address. So that thing should keep in mind that we don't pass the mid server name here. We pass the host name of the mid server. Okay, or the IP address. So I have passed through this scratchpad variable here. So that's the syntax of calling scratchpad variable. You just use dollar sign braces and the scratchpad variable name and the braces closed. Okay, and the command is I have used simple command get service, which is a window command. So I have given the command here, and this is the so this is basic demo. Okay, so where we have a like AD scripts where we need to um, pass the values of users to the AD system in order to create a user in the AD. So there we use the PowerShell script variables. So what we do is we um, take input from the user through service catalog and we pass those variable PowerShell script variables here into the PowerShell script. So this is being used for that purpose and the script file. So uh, if we don't want to use the command uh, here, we uh, what we do is we create a script file. So service now has given a one table script file. So if you don't wish to use the command like this script file is very large or something like that, then you can use the um, script file here. So this I'll open existing one. So see this is the mid server script file with a name, the par parent and the description and this is the PowerShell script. Okay, so and I have used command in this demo, but we can also use this PowerShell script file. I mean, we can create PowerShell script file and can call there. OK, so uh, like if I wish to uh, do it through a script file, then I won't uh, write command over here and we just call this script file. So uh, the script file, what uh, uh, actually the second purpose of script file is to eliminate the maintenance. For example, if you want to edit the script file, uh, if you want to edit the PowerShell command, then you have to go into the workflow, check out the workflow and edit the command from there. So uh, instead of that, you can use the script file. So you just change the script file here and it will be uh, refreshed in the mid server. So what this script file will do is, so when we use script file, it creates a copy in the mid server, a local go copy. So um, in the machine where the mid server is installed. Okay, now next is the sensor script. So sensor script is basically to read the output or the error. Okay, so what I've done is, so this is the syntax to um, 
activity is the object which will read the error or any out or output so what i have done is i have uh, fetched the fault description which is an error through activity object into this scratchpad variable that is error message okay and output in this result scratchpad variable which i'll be using so sorry yeah so which i'll be using in next activity of the workflow so this is all about powershell so the powershell has two um, output that is success Okay, so do, do you want me to wrap up? So I'm just almost done. So there are two outputs, success and failure. So if it is success, then it will go into the value of return, a value success, and will print the scratch pad result. Okay, so I'll just demonstrate it now. Just give me a minute. Take two minutes, Richa. So I've created one catalog item and attached this test orchestration workflow into that. So it will be called through a catalog item and I have ordered it. It's a simple catalog item. I have not uh, created any variables or so. So now what I'll go is I'll go into the all active workflow which are running. Active workflows. So you can see the workflow got into the success and get into the end. So in order to see the result of Scratchpad, we'll just go into the workflow context and we we'll give the related record. Yeah. So this is our workflow active context for our item. So you can see in the scratchpad result, our services are being fetched. So you can see the Adobe ARM service with the status, if it is running or stopped, Adobe Flash Player update stopped. So with the status, it, uh, whether the service is running or stopped, um, the details have been fetched. So. This is the output which we have got after the success PowerShell activity. And if there is like any error in the command or the mid server was down, then it will simply go into the failure and will print the failure reason. So that is the basic orchestration demo. Racha. Hello, Richa, you there?